case, superheroes' arsenal is almost more important than the superhero themselves. Almost. Today on Top 10 Nerd, it's the top 10 most powerful superhero tools of the trade. I'm Adam Andrews, and let's jump on in. Kicking off the list at number 10 is the Adamantium Claws. I think we are honestly starting off this list with both the most simple, yet the most totally awesome tool of destruction on this list. The character of Wolverine is one of the most popular and iconic characters of the X-Men, and a big part of that, aside from his personality and healing factor, are his six retractable foot-long bone claws, three in each arm, that are housed beneath the skin and muscle in his forearms. Originally, just composed of bone, Wolverine had his entire body famously coated in true adamantium, which is the most durable and rare form of adamantium, second only to proto-adamantium, which is what makes up Captain America's shield. With this enhancement, not only is Wolverine's skeleton almost completely indestructible, but now his razor-sharp claws could cut through practically anything. An added benefit of the adamantium bones and claws is that now, Wolverine has a much heavier amount of weight behind any punch he throws, causing him to be able to cause even more destruction with his claws if he wants to. Lastly, a new short-lived feature of his adamantium claws upon his resurrection was that they could heat up thousands of degrees in mere seconds based on his berserker rages. So not only are they indestructible and can cut through anything, but now they're also incredibly hot? I don't know why it was necessary, but it was awesome. Number 9, the Sword of Superman. Did you know that Superman had a sword? I think most fans of the Man of Steel are just used to this guy using his fists as his primary damage dealers. But for a very brief amount of time in Superman Annual number 10 from November of 1984, a sword that was as old as the universe forged by time and space itself, found its way to Superman when he had been defeated by King Cosmos. The sword itself had been traveling through space over billions and billions of years, coming into contact with billions of beings, all of whom were unable to wield it. It wasn't until it finally reached its destination, Superman's outstretched hand, that the blade was finally used successfully. This ancient sword of both energy and matter gave Superman the power to defeat Cosmos, and it connected Superman to the energy of creation and granted him cosmic awareness as a test of his resolve. Superman passed this test by actually rejecting that power, and once he did that, the blade evaporated, leaving only the hilt which Superman then threw back into space to continue its journey. It was only there for a minute, but tell me everything I just said wasn't cool as hell, and I'll call you a liar. This sword is awesome, okay? Number 8, Aquaman's Trident. Known as the Trident of Neptune, Aquaman's Trident is one of the most powerful legendary artifacts in all of DC Comics. Created by the god Neptune, according to Greek myths, the Trident has been passed down the royal lineage of Atlantis for generations, eventually landing itself in the possession of none other than Aquaman himself. While the Trident is a powerful weapon that can pierce some of the strongest characters and materials in DC Comics, its true strength lies in its ability to manipulate all forms of water, control the weather, and even direct blasts of energy. It also looks totally badass and symbolizes the wielder's rule over Atlantis and the Seven Seas, which make up like 7% of the Earth, so that's a statement right there. Number 7, Mjolnir. The Hammer of Thor is quite possibly one of the most well-known weapons in not only comic books, but in mythology. But I think that's partially due to comic books, so... There you go. Mjolnir was forged out of Uru metal by the legendary dwarven smiths Eitri, Brock, and Buri inside the heart of a dying star. But the chunk of Uru used to create the hammer had also been infused with an unimaginably powerful cosmic storm called the God Tempest by All Father Odin. After 17 weeks and the explosion of the dying star, the hammer was finally finished. At first, the hammer was so unruly that it couldn't even be be controlled until Odin placed the enchantment of worthiness, at which point it became the weapon he used up until he took the throne of Asgard. From that point forward, Mjolnir became the tool of Thor. Mjolnir has survived Kang the Conqueror's anti-matter screen, heat as extreme as the Heart of Suns, and blasts powerful enough to destroy planets. There is also almost nothing except primary adamantium that is capable of withstanding a full-on blow from Mjolnir 
not even the armor of the Celestials. But of course, whacking things isn't all it's good for. Mjolnir allows its wielder to manipulate the weather, fly at three times faster the speed of light, project and channel vast energies like the God Blast, create wormholes, manipulate matter, and so much more. I'm sure it would also do an excellent job at hammering nails too. Number 6, Kaji Da. This little unassuming blue scarab may not look intimidating, but this mystical alien artifact has the potential power to destroy entire planets. The Kaji Da was created by an alien race known as the Reach, who were a race of planet conquerors before they came into conflict with the Green Lanterns. The Reach and the Green Lantern Corps drew up a treaty prohibiting the Reach from taking over any more worlds. So, instead, the Reach came up with the Scarabs, living weapons genetically engineered by the Reach and programmed to be obedient to them. The plan was to leave the Scarab and its database on an inhabited world and when that planet reached a certain technological milestone, the Scarab would activate and bond to one of the native inhabitants, overriding their personality and making them a Reach infiltrator. Once one Scarab, Kajida, made its way to Earth and specifically ancient Egypt, the Scarab was imbued with mystical energy and came into the possession of the pharaoh at the time, who used its power to help his kingdom prosper. The scarab was buried alongside the pharaoh, locked away until archaeologist Dan Garrett discovered it, using the scarab to become the first ever blue beetle. It passed its way down to Ted Kord and then eventually to Jaime Reyes, to whom it granted its coolest abilities and revealed its true origins. Number 5, the Destroyer Armor. To call the Destroyer a weapon seems like the most fitting title. It's technically more like a robot or a suit of armor that is inhabited by a spirit of a sentient being, which becomes overridden with the Destroyer's sole purpose of battle and destruction. Which is so fun! Yay! The Destroyer is extremely powerful and was created out of an unknown metal by Odin himself that was even stronger than Uru metal and stored various gods' energies, making it a level of magical power that exceeds almost any technological suit ever. It was created by Odin specifically in order to battle the Celestials. Now while Thor wields Mjolnir and it is nothing to scoff at, the Destroyer has pummeled Thor while he was holding his mallet so many freaking times. The Destroyer has been able to tank hits from Odin himself and he made the thing. The only thing that's really destroyed the Destroyer are the immensely powerful blasts of the Celestials themselves. But anything below that should run for the hills if it sees the Destroyer coming, especially if it opens up its face to start firing massive energy blasts. Number 4, Green Lantern's Ring. It's easy to overlook just how powerful the Green Lanterns can actually be because, I mean, there are just so many of them. We have seen swaths of Green Lanterns wiped out before, with their rings flying around to go and find new bearers. But at that same time, we have seen some certain Green Lanterns use their rings to create kryptonite, top notch massive space stations, a military force of marines made out of pure energy, and even an entire city city and all the people who used to live in it. The huge fluctuation in capability is because the Green Lantern power ring is limited only by its bearer's willpower and creativity, meaning that there essentially isn't really a limit to what can be done if it's put in the right hands. Some individuals have even broken their rings programming and gone outside the bounds of the Guardian's rules, like when a dark multiverse version of Batman gained the Green Lantern ring and broke its programming with his willpower and connection to the darkness. He used the ring to take the lives of the entire Green Lantern Corps and the Guardians of the Universe. He then aged himself up and his world began to completely disintegrate. The Green Lantern rings are powerful enough to power space cops, but their potential is pretty much limitless. Number 3, the Helmet of Fate. Considering this thing is a helmet, you'd be forgiven for assuming this is more of a piece of armor than any kind of offensive tool. Technically, Yes, but I think it would be more fair to say that the Helmet of Fate turns its user into the danger by granting them the most powerful magics in the DC Universe. The Helmet itself was created by the wildly powerful sorcerer and Lord of Order known as Nabu, alongside the Amulet of Anubis and the Cloak of Destiny which combined together turn the wearer into Doctor Fate, granting them a fraction of Nabu's power. Even if it's just a fraction of that power, it's basically got a limitless 
repository of arcane energy. The helmet grants its wearer the knowledge to cast a huge number of spells, the ability to control the elements, and bestows them with cosmic awareness, all of which can be combined to make Dr. Fate, whoever it is, one of the most powerful characters in the DC Universe. It does have some caveats though. Number 2, The Ultimate Nullifier. Ooh, the Ultimate Nullifier is such a fun one to talk about. When it was first introduced, Uwatu the Watcher revealed its location to the Fantastic Four so that they could use it to defend the planet from Galactus. But no one actually used it then. It was just shown to Galactus by Reed Richards, which caused the World Devourer to simply run away. He had good reason to do so though. The Ultimate Nullifier is funny because its power is entirely dependent on who is wielding it. If the Nullifier is in the hand of an idiot, for example, it will basically nullify the user themselves, wiping them from existence. However, in the hands of someone like Reed Richards or Galactus, who it technically belongs to, the nullifier can completely erase and rewrite entire timelines from start to end or even entire multiverses. It was used against the cosmic entity Abraxas, for example, to wipe him completely from existence as if he never existed in the first place. The first time it was ever used, the ultimate nullifier destroyed an entire alien empire and nine tenths of the entire universe. So yeah. Yeah, it's pretty damn powerful. And finally, in at number one, it's the Miracle Machine. This one was a new discovery for me, and that's kind of ridiculous considering how crazy powerful it actually is, and how it was kind of instrumental in one of DC's crisis events. Essentially, the Miracle Machine first came around in the year 2960, when it was given to the Legion of Superheroes. The machine itself is an advancement of the willpower technology created by the Guardians of the Universe, and can very literally turn thoughts into reality. This made it incredibly dangerous dangerous because, I mean, I don't know if you know, but uh, people kind of suck and have some pretty depraved thoughts from time to time. The machine has only been used a handful of times because honestly, if it was used all the time, there would either be absolutely no comic book stories because it would be the answer to every conflict, or it would cause the destruction of literally everything. It was ultimately locked in a block of inertron in the Legion's vault and used most famously by Superman during the final crisis to stop Darkseid and Superboy Prime when Clark was sent to the future. And that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching here at Top 10 Nerd. I'm Adam Andrews. I'll catch you all on the flippy flop. Peace out, nerds!